you find it quite disturbing. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, Anonymous by itself didn't really see the video as that interesting, but what, but what, got, us, uh, what got our attention was when Scientology demanded that the video be pulled and we saw that as an attack on free speech. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now, with, with Anonymous, it's actually quite a, it's a blanket term. You can't really apply it to any particular group or, yes. or individual. It's, it's just a term. Uh, like, so one, one action perpetrated by a group calling itself Anonymous can't really be applied to another group. It's, the, it's, it's sort of the phenomenon of the name itself. But, uh, yeah, and also the masks. The oh. masks. Um, well, would you, the reason why we wear these masks is because uh, Scientology employs what's called fair game. It's yes. A, you, have you, are you aware of I this? have heard about fair game, and um, I find that quite frightening. Can you explain that to, to us? Well, fair game was an official policy uh, by, uh, created by L. Ron Hubbard, who was the, the uh, creator of the Scientology cult. Uh, and what it basically says is that any... Any enemy of Scientology, which could mean a critic such, yep. such as myself or, or a, a journalist. Um, Me? Possibly you. It de yep. depends. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't think I wouldn't be too worried these days. But uh, yep. it's, it's, a, it's a policy that, uh, that, that pretty much gives Scientologists a right to, uh, uh, I quote, uh, sue... Uh, let me just... Let me just Bring up the quote here for a second here. Yeah, um, yeah. We've got Anonymous on the phone here, and he's uh, finding details about the media. Okay, here we yeah. go. Yeah. Um, uh, this is an, this is officially part of the part of the uh, part of the fair game order. It says mm -hmm. a, uh, a suppressive person or group becomes fair game. By fair game, it is meant that the individual may not be further protected by the codes and disciplines or the rights of a Scientologist. And before I go on, I might also add that fair game also applies to ex-Scientologists yes. uh, who are, in their eyes, the worst kinds of people. Um, yeah. And it says that uh, the homes, property, places and abodes of persons who have been active in attempting to suppress Scientology or Scientologists are all beyond any protection of Scientology ethics unless absolved by later ethics or an amnesty. Uh, and further down, it actually says... Uh, it gives a description of an enemy. It means SP, which stands for suppressive person. Oh, right. It says um, it may be uh, an SP may be deprived of property or injured by any means by any Scientologist without any discipline of the Scientologist. May be tricked, li may be tricked, sued, or lied to, or destroyed. Um, this policy was that it was claimed to have been abolished um, mm. shortly after it was actually. Put into Scientology doctrine for reasons of it being bad PR. Now, right. uh, it's quite quite um, quite amusing that it was actually taken out because of bad PR and not I don't know um, being morally wrong. But yes. anyway, uh, a lot of Scientologists actually claim that this uh, fair game is actually no longer in effect. But mm -hmm. a lot of uh, recent recent occurrences would suggest otherwise. Such as uh, some some protesters uh, in Sydney have been identified, myself included. Yeah. Um, and I've received a cease and desist letter from uh, this uh, this law firm called Brox Partners. Yeah. Um, uh, this was they they still haven't told me, managed to tell me how they got my information or anything. But yeah. uh, they they say they basically accused me of pu publicly trying to kill Scientologists and uh, really yeah um, and. You know, when, when, when you make claims like that, you sort of need evidence to back it up. Yes. And, uh, I, I might just say now to all your listeners, yeah. um, no, I have not ever threatened to kill a Scientologist. Such, a, such an accusation is quite offensive, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and uh, to any Scientologists who are listening out there, and I'm sure you are, um, yeah, it's, don't do it. It's not nice. It's kind of nasty for a, a, someone to do that in the name of religion. Mm. Yes. Um, but... Uh, can I, uh, but uh, yeah. the, the cease and desist letter had no legal backing or anything. Yeah. But I've also received um, some threatening phone calls from this uh, guy called Mike Ferris. He's the, I believe he's the spokesperson for Scientology in New Zealand, but he yeah. also managed um, some fair game, fair game tactics over here in Australia. Um, but I haven't really heard much from him lately. I think, uh, I think uh, um, he's sort of. He scurried off when he realised that his attempts were kind of useless. I mean, Anonymous mm. doesn't really care that much about fair game, but the mask itself sort of helps us 
conceal our, our identity, so it makes their job a little bit harder. Yes, yeah. yeah. And there's two things about fair game. One thing I, um, when I was going through this information, is that my understanding was um, they didn't, although they seemed to be recalling fair game, actually what they were doing was recalling the term fair game, not the actual practice. Mm. And the document I saw is um, we're going to recall uh, saying fair game because it's bad PR. That's correct, yeah. yeah. Um, it was really cancelled in name only. Um, yes. Just pretty much what you said, yeah. It's, but uh, <clears throat> there have been many court cases uh, since then where uh, Scientologist lawyers have claimed that uh, fair game should be protected as a religious right and a religious practice. Mm. So there seems to be a lot of inconsistencies in between uh, what Scientologists are saying and you know what, what was written as official policy. It's just all very convoluted and... It's a, a perfect example of uh, Scientology changing, like switching things around only when, it, when it's convenient for them. Yes. And the other thing about fair game, I mean, we'll go into this in a sec, I understand that um, uh, Scientology employs mind control techniques, but I, I would also um, say that this uh, fair game uh, concept would be uh, one way of keeping people, members within the Scientology cult, mm -hmm. that would um, deter them from leaving. Uh, that is, that, that's one of the reasons uh, why, uh, why it's so hard for Scientologists to leave. A lot of people, um, want, uh, they find it hard to believe how people are in this, inside this cult and they know, it's, they know it's bad, they know it's a joke, but they still find it really hard to, believe, to, to leave. And um, yeah. uh, I, guess, I guess the case, uh, I guess what you just mentioned is one, is one of the main reasons. Uh, like what, what Scientologists... Um, that, that, when a Scientologist is inside is inside the cult, they get what's called a they get a dossier on them. A, it's called a PC folder, I, from memory. Yeah. Um, PC standing for preclear. Yeah. Uh, and all in this inside this folder, there is all these confessionals. Um, so like all this em embarrassing information that they've uh, divulged uh, when they've been audited. You might have seen uh, mm. uh, people held holding these cans and like these little rods uh, attached to this device called an e-meter in the street. Right. Are you familiar with the device? Oh, look, I, no. I, I, it rings a bell a long time ago. I think I have seen something like that. Right. Um, if you've ever walked past um, a free stress test table, uh, they, ah, yes. they used to be quite um, common around Town Hall, yeah. Yeah. down the CBD. Mm -hmm. uh, they, um, what, what they're doing is, is a, it's a basic uh, form of what's called auditing in Scientology. Yes. And auditing is... Virtually the main the main thing you that, that, that you undergo to clear yourself like, to um like to further further your progression yeah. towards spiritual enlightenment it's yeah. by divulging you, you, all your problems and yes. all your all your secrets but what it really is doing yeah. is that they're finding a way to control you they're finding where your weaknesses lie yeah. Yeah. they're trying to find all this embarrassing information about you mm -hmm. so they can threaten you yeah. you know if you leave and start and start flapping your gums. We're gonna we're gonna release all this information and oh, right. it's it's around, called yeah. character assassination. So, yeah. Um, yeah, about twenty years ago, I um, went to the uh, the Church of Scientology in Melbourne, and I um, two times I got the personality test. I think it is. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, that's the really long one, isn't it? The one? Oh, it's five hundred questions or more. Yeah, mm. it takes a long time to fill out. Yeah, well, that by itself would could also be considered considered a mind control technique because what what that's doing is that they're trying to find where you, like where your weaknesses lie. Yes. And so they're finding a way to sort of exploit you into convincing that Scientology is the best thing for you. Well, yeah, that's what happened with me. They were quite... They, they sort of looked at it and said, oh, well, you know, you're doing well here and here, but look at this. Mm, well, mm, mm, you need improvement and we can help. Wow. Yeah, but it, it's funny that they use the word test because the word test implies a variation of results. It's always the same result, though. They'll mm. always tell you that you're messed up and that your personality yes. is bad and that only they can help you. Yeah. And after, you know, if it, after 500 questions, this is another tactic they use. Mm. Um, you know, after sitting in a room for that long, filling out this test, you're willing to... It, it, it's a way of breaking you down, so you're more... Uh, you're, you're more open to 